In this case, I'll be showing you how to import Excel-based financials. And in this case, it's for a discretionary trust. So let's just quickly look through how I've prepared these accounts. And actually, I have two, uh, two sets of accounts. They're actually for exactly the same entity. And you'll see here, this is the single beneficiary rows. So you can see we just have beneficiary, beneficiary. And the balances for the beneficiaries in the current liability section, if we have a look through here, the balance is nothing more than, so I'm keeping this simple, there, there is only, in this case, a share of the profit. So the beneficiaries are getting a share of the profit, right? So that's the net profit. They're essentially getting 50% each. And then here you can see, if you look at the formula there, what are we doing? We're taking the opening balance plus half of the profit. And we're doing that for each of the for each of the beneficiaries, right? If we have a look down here, we can see that our balance sheet balances. We've only got the settled sum uh, in the equity section. So that's one, so that's one way of doing it. And then the other way of doing it is like this, this is with multiple beneficiary rows. So we have here, once again, a share of that profit. If we have a look. So once again, just that 50% of the profit going to the beneficiary. There's no drawings here for the beneficiaries. We're keeping it simple. But in the second year, you can see what we've done is this is the share of this row is the share of the profit. But then we're saying, okay, now we've got an opening balance because obviously that profit becomes the opening balance for this year. So let's see how that goes in terms of doing the import. And let's jump in here. I'll provide the first example, which is the import of the single road set of beneficiaries. It's a single row. I'll import that one. And we can see we get our net profit 65.10. And the profits are split, as I explained, to the beneficiaries. So obviously the balance for the beneficiaries is going up. That's their share of profit that, that year. And then this year, they've got the opening balance from that year plus the share of the profit here. Let's check our classifications. That looks right. That looks right. So this is all automated, the classification here. That's all right. And what we can do now is, since the classifications are right, we can, pre we can prepare. And I did this once before and made a mistake. So let me take that out and start again. So it's for the 20 year, right, with the 19 comparatives. And we need to go to the profit allocation. So let's just take a look and see. Easiest way is to pick up the profit allocation from here. So, so we know that the profit allocation 32901, 32901, 32901, okay. And because of the rounding, it's actually two. So now we've got the profit shared out. And the profit for the next year is 5417. 5417. 5417. Is that all shared? Okay, so maybe we just need to do it with, because we don't round, because of the rounding, right? We'll just give that beneficiary an extra dollar. And bear in mind that you can see here that what's happening is this is assuming. This is assuming an opening balance of 32,902. You see how this has worked its way through, and we end up with a balance of 38,319. 38,319. No balance there. That all looks right to me. So we have 38,319, 32,902, and we can comp confirm that 38,319, 32,901 or 902. Well, let's just see how that looks when we download the report. C. 
uh, sharing out sh balance sheet balancing, sharing out the profit, profit going out to the beneficiaries, no retained profits, and we have we have our opening balance walking forward and our share of profit. Right. So that is that's the methodology when you have when you just want to simply work with single rows. And there's a reason why you might want to work with single rows in your accounting software, whether it's QuickBooks or Xero or whatever, and that is that it's a whole lot easier to just simply keep, keep single rows. You can see the complexity here is minimized. Okay. Now for the import of the multiple beneficiary rows. So we've got profit rows and we've got balance rows. multiple beneficiaries. You can see obviously we've got more, row, more rows to deal with now, right? Because obviously for this year we've now got opening balance, so we've got a balance row and we've got a profit row. We've got profit rows and balance rows. Let's go and check our classification. Okay, this picked it up automatically. You can see it picks it up automatically if you put a little bit of effort into getting your naming correct, uh, conventions right. So it does say beneficiary and it does say opening balance and it does say share of profit. We'll have a look at, we'll have a look now, or oh, I should just delete that one out. It's a dummy. So let's start from scratch. And this one's multiple rows, right? So we want to we want to fix our balance. So you can see now we could deal with John Doe, John Doe's opening balance, and Anna Doe's opening balance. If you get these wrong, then of course the thing doesn't. So you spend a bit of time make sure you're selecting the right the right line item for the right person, and then we know there's a share of profit, right? So John Doe's share of profit. And Anadoe share of profit. So Anna, Anna, John, John, 32, 38. Balance walking its way forward. Let's have a look. Balance sheet balances, all the profits are cleared out, and we have our beneficiaries with their balances walking forward and their shares of profit. So why might you want to use why might you want to use the multiple beneficiary rows? Well, it gives you a little bit more control in systems like QuickBooks and Xero if you want to segregate out. Uh, if you want to segregate out these um, these types, where, whether it's profit, opening balance, drawings, capital introduced, you can separate out the, the line items and keep the underlying facts in the correct line item. But of course, it adds a degree of complexity. And of course, what you'd have to do is if you're using a system like Xero, QuickBooks, Myob, etc., you'll have to do some manual roll forward journals. So once you've uh, once you've once you know what your because obviously th the balances for that year you don't want them to show up here so in this year what you'd have to do is on the first of July you would essentially debit the share of profit so you debit the share of profit account and credit the opening balance account so you can see there's going to be some manual journal entries later on when we use our when we build our logit postback system. Um, then we will we will adopt this methodology for postbacks.